And that was a disgraceful performance, in my opinion. We threw that game. We gave it away by doing that. We gave them the friggin' game. In my opinion, that sucked. What's that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? All right. Welcome to episode four of Aced. I'm your host, Drew Soleil. I'm joined today by Brent Go, David Maynard, and of course, always Michael Albaugh. Um, we're going to talk a little bit of playoffs today. Uh, we're going to talk about um, what happened last week or the week that just happened, and what's going to happen. We're going to make some predictions for this week, and then we're going to talk about some things not playoff related towards the end of the show. But um, today, I want to start it off with a with an interview of um, the Claude Nine captain, Durandadan. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, obviously, you guys. Um, well, you guess who your guys win was kind of an upset, but you were still the number three seed, so it's not that huge. And uh, you beat them in the regular season as well, correct? Yep, we beat them in the regular season. Okay. Um, so I just got a few questions for you. Uh, you're you're a fresh you're a fresh captain, a fresh face of the OLS, and we're happy you joined us this split. Um, so my first question is, how often do you and Claude Nine practice? Well, you see, we practice uh, not very often. Uh, we run into some hardships. Uh, we don't really like practicing together. Everybody gets mad at each other. It's just not as fun. But, you know, we really pull it together for our games. Uh, we just, I don't know, everybody has this little inner god, this little inner faker, and they really pull it out. All right. Um, I just want to ask Maynard and Mikey this. You guys are both captains as well. How often do you practice with your teams, respectively? Uh, Maynard, how often do you practice? How often did you practice with your team? It was it was pretty variable. I mean, on when we played teams that were we like really needed to win against or or that we like really respected, we'd play we'd play like three or four four nights a week. Okay. All right. Like we got we got pretty uh we got pretty hardcore in our practicing. Okay. Um, before we played a uh, like right up near finals week, but uh. We generally did like one or two. And, and I know, Mikey, you guys practice every once in a while, right? You don't. You guys all play league individually, but you don't practice the team that that often. Maybe t two or three times a week, correct? Yeah, I mean, we we play like maybe not as a full team, but like as two or three, because just like scheduling practice doesn't really work out, and uh, we probably only play as a full team like two or three times a week. Yeah. All right, so you're not that bad when it comes to that, Cloud Nine. Uh, you guys practice probably about the same time as other um, teams around the league. Uh, my next question for you is, what do you think the strongest part of your team is? Uh, obviously, everybody on your team produces, but who do you think is your necessary need-to-go to guy or guys? I think we all play a very unique role on the team. I don't think anybody throughout the entire game uh, takes the hot seat and carries us. Um, in the top lane, we got, we got the tanky guy. Um, whenever he's not on his Fiora, he just, he just kind of he soaks up everything. Late game, like he's just the man. He just he just stands there. He wins team fights just by being there, his presence. In the mid game, though, you know we got our mid laner, Curse Dayman, the God, right? He's yeah. just he just out he just out plays them, you know, on team fights in the mid game, gets us the real lead. And then I have to give it to myself for the early game. Okay. Uh, just just going around being the jungler. I mean, that's kind of where the jungler is supposed to make his big presence. So it's pretty natural. But I feel like everybody on our team really like that's that's where I want them to be. I guess because I chose their roles for them um, after discussing with them uh, what they were strong on. So. All right. I well, that's pretty obvious when we watch you get uh, like when we watch you play because you like to play a little bit J four, and we saw that in the playoffs, and you did really really well on it. So. Uh, we all we obviously see you like that early jungle presence, and you get your lanes ahead, and that's how you guys win a lot of games. Um, moving on to my next question: How do you feel about in your first ever split? You're gu you're guaranteed RP now. It just how you play determines how much RP you get. How do you feel about that? You feel pretty good about that in your first ever split? Hey, it's mission accomplished from here. Um, now we're just going for more. I really want tournament rise because you know who doesn't? But man, uh, I really didn't think I'd make it this far. Like I actually this past week uh, we tried to practice with my team and I just wasn't feeling it. I gave up on them. I said, you know, I'm just not going to practice. And you know, I told them that they could still practice, uh, 
but you know, I, I was really, I was frustrated. I was, I was tired. I, you know, this being a captain has been really rough. Uh, but to get here and like have my team still going and with that awesome performance these past two games, like I'm hyped. I'm ready to go now. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck. I'm just going to end it on this last question for you. You said being a captain is pretty hard. Uh, most captains would agree with you on that statement. Would you do it again? Because you, you're a very good captain, and you're, you're pretty, like you're new to the, the, the scene here, and we, we would love to have you back as a captain. But would you want to do that again, you think? I would want to do it again, but it really depends on, I guess, who else is captain and how many other captains there are. Um, I really felt like my experience uh, playing the worlds of Warcraft uh, really helped me out with my captaining experience. <laughs> Okay. Um, but you know, it's it's def it's different. Like having to deal with other teams I think is the hardest part. Dealing with my team was fun, you know, we had our rough our ups and our downs, but you know, that was that was part of it. But then dealing with the other captains and trying to get things scheduled whenever you think that they're lying about when they can actually play, that's that was that was a bunch of crap. I hate that and I don't want to do that again. But I do definitely like my team. I All love right. them. All right. Well, um I know it was a short interview, uh, sorry about that, but I want to thank you for joining us, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in your playoff series. Um, you guys are facing Meme Team 6, I believe, yes. So, yeah, good luck to you guys, and hopefully you can win and get to the championship, all right? Yep, thanks, later. All right, have a good one. All right, now we're moving back to the people, my guests, Doc Maynard, Smegs, I know you haven't talked yet, we'll get to you, don't worry, man. I know you're a little angry over there. I can see you. Uh, we got, and we got Mikey. Right, we got go Mikey. Ahead. So, um, obviously, playoffs happened. And obviously, it was a, it was a huge week, right? Um, we had upsets literally in every game. Uh, I, we really don't know where to start. I don't really know where to start. So, we've always started in the blue conference on this show. So, we're going to change it to, and start in the gold conference this time. We're going to start with Ohana versus Meme Team 6. Uh, obviously... I'm not too happy about this, but I would rather have some other people's um, input on this matter. So I'm going to start off with Smegs. Smegs, did you see the Ohana ups, the the Mean Team Six upset coming? Oh, yes, I did. You yes, did see it. You did see it coming. All right, explain your reasoning for that, man. And how? Uh, did... I mean, we seen it last year or last split in the summer with um, what was it? Snails Whales versus the Ohana Means Family, the semifinal game. We saw game one, Ohana means family, steamrolled snails whales. Game two and three, Ohana, Ohana just like just lost it. I mean, you saw Cassidy go on tilt, and like, and you see like his performance nearly dropped dramatically in the second and third game. Of that, and we see that happening in uh, Ohana means family versus Bean Team Six. So yeah, what they got two out, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, Cassidy is playing well up until the point where. Like the where like Zelcor just like got big in both games. He played what he played a Kali game one, Nar game two. Yeah. And just wrecked oh, the family. Oh, all right, uh, Mike. I know I've talked to you personally after the game last night, and you kind of questioned mm -hmm. the bans and picks we had. So I like you to tell tell the other people who are out there listening how you felt about Ohana, how you think we might have lost it in our pick and ban phase, right? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. It just seemed like Ohana picked a lot of champions that they haven't used before. They it looks like they kind of abandoned their uh, like winning formula. So I was confused by that, and also didn't use any of their bans on Zelcor. Just kind of let him go crazy both games. Uh, I can I can explain that reasoning. Um, the first game we banned two of them, out, two of his tops out, you know, and he he picked a Kali and still wrecked us. So we felt if we could take away his supporting cast as best people, like that, we would have a chance, um, and that's that's why we went with that philosophy. Obviously, it didn't work out for us, but we felt like that was the stronger thing to do at that point. We thought we could handle the Nari, and obviously we couldn't. So there, there's the reasoning behind that. Um, but yeah, that Mean Team Six played really, really well. Um, Maynard, do you have anything to say about? It? Did you watch the series at all? No. You didn't watch it at all. Okay. Not even close. All right. Uh, well, basically, we got raffle stomped in the second game. Uh, in the first game, it was kind of close. Like the early game was actually kind of maybe tilting in our favor. And then I, we... I do think I looked at the scores. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. That, that second game looked really ugly. 
Uh, yeah, the first game we just caught, we caught a really bad dragon. And, you know, Zelkor, great player, took advantage of it, Telly down and got two kills on Kali. You know, you get a Kali rolling, it's pretty hard to stop her, so... Well, um, I think it's like a, it's like Smake said, the tilt is real, and the statistics back it up. Because first game you did alright, second game you got stumped, like, that's... That happens. It, it's very easy, like, I think, I personally think that morale is more important, a more important part of, uh, like, OS than almost anything else. I would agree with that statement, and our morale was kind of down in the second game a little bit, but we definitely thought we could win it still. Uh, then we had a couple of things not go our way, you know, early, and you know that that kind of that kind of takes away from your morale. But um, hey, you can't take anything away from Mean Team Six. They played almost a flawless game, and they did really really well against us. So uh, you got. I don't want people to think that we're kind of getting away from this. So if anybody else has anything else to say about Mean Team Six beating us up then please say it. So I, I don't want people to think we're we're biased on this show. Uh, anybody else have anything to say about that? Because we'll, we'll move on to Team Fuck This Club versus uh, Claude 9. Alright, well I'm going to take that silence as a yes. So, Claude 9 versus Team Fuck This Club. Um, you know, Evan Randazza uh, has been talking shit most of, the, <laughs> most of this split on everybody, right? So, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's good to see him lose. Uh, and well, was... this is this is a hard uh, this is a hard th pill for me to swallow actually because I was on BD's team during the summer. I do like BD. No, that's fine. Yeah. If he wouldn't have drafted Evan, I would have been fine with him winning. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, Evan's talked a lot of shit on Ohana lately, so you know, I'm not I'm not gonna feel bad for him losing. But they did lose to a very good team. Claude Nine is amazing. Um, so they we had we just interviewed the captain earlier. That team came out of nowhere, and they they have a pretty good jungle mid combo. Um, I think Chad said last time we did the show that him and ZZ were the best mid jungle combo. I think Curse Damon Duranadan can give him definitely uh, a run for his money on that one. Um, Mikey, how did you feel about the Team Fuck This Club versus Cloud Nine game games? Uh, the series that is. Yeah, I think they countered uh, uh, FTC pretty well. They forced Evan onto champions that he couldn't like hyper carry on even though he tried to with the jacks but it just really didn't work out for him and then they camped BD mid lane like you said with the uh, synergy and uh, it really just they didn't have an answer for that yeah and that, that was really very obvious um, I think like Duranadin had like ridiculous scores in the jungle I think he went like 9-1-3 and three one game or something like, he, he did really well in the J4, and they kind of controlled all the objectives. Um, it was very similar to the Mean Team 6 versus Ohana game in that it never actually seemed like the the higher seed had a chance. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me on that. Do you agree with me on on that, Mikey? Yeah, both games it was just one-sided. I don't know. No sign of the life. <laughs> all right, Smegs, did, teams. Smegs, did you watch Team Fuck This Club versus Cloud9? I did not, unfortunately, but I can say that the Durandin Curse Dayman mid and jungle combo is very strong. I happened to face well, when we uh, called us Hongis played Cloud Nine early in the season. Um, I was playing mid against Curse Dayman. You cannot let him get Syndra. Like he will do a ton of. Uh, he will be a big impact in that game. Like if he plays Syndra in any of his future games, okay. he'll definitely be. Um, well, actually, we did win that game, but like it was only due to like a small error that Chris Damon did have towards the end of the game. So, I mean, you also have Pharaoh. I mean, even though he sucks, he does carry games sometimes. Oh yeah, Pharaoh does carry games. Too. Uh, yeah, I mean, he just needs a little mistake for him to take advantage of it. Um, I guess Mean Team Six, you're listening. Smeg says ban the ban the Zindra. You probably already know that, but um, you need to you need to uh, ban that Syndra. And Maynard, you have you don't really know anything about Team Fuck This Club, right? Or I mean, you might know something well, about. I, I know a lot about it. I mean, okay. Like uh, Evan, like like you guys said, Evan and the uh, BD are the pillars of the team. Like they were able to shut them down completely. The team collapsed. It, it's I don't think that's very surprising. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, once you saw that Evan was losing lane, pretty he was losing lane pretty roughly, and I think it was the second game when he was on his jacks. Um, you kind of started to feel it slip away from them because that's something they rely on. 
Uh, if Evan loses lane, then that means the game's probably not going so well for them. And also, if BD's losing lane, then the game's really, really not going well for them. And that's what you saw, and unfortunately they got 2 0 uh, and they that was the completion of upset week, I believe. I think that was um that was the last game that finished or last series that finished up. So um, props to Cloud Nine. Uh, you're gonna be facing Meme Team Six in the semifinals, guaranteed RP at least. So you've had a great season so far. Hopefully you can continue it. Um, with that though, we're gonna move over to the Blue Conference. Uh, something uh, all you guys are more familiar with, considering you're you played in that conference. Um, we're gonna start with. The cold ass honkies versus butt putters. Uh, obviously, Mikey's in the call, call captain, but they they won two nothing and side series of the entire week. It was a very big blowout, and I'm just gonna jump right to Smegs on this. Smegs, how did you feel about that? Uh, was it surprising to see cold ass honkies win that much, like by that much? Uh, a little bit surprising, uh, seeing that like we've we've seen throughout this whole season that butt putters had very solid lanes, especially the solo lanes, top, mid, and, and the jungle actually. Um, Connor is a playmaker on the butt putters, uh, but then you have like big carries like Mikey and and Fartosh in the mid and the AD carry um, that can really just like determine how the game goes, like if. Those, if one of those two gets big, like it's probably going to go to the cold ass honky's favor. Um, yeah, and we saw in both games, Mikey got entirely huge. Like I, I casted both those games, and he was just punishing. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the AD carry for butt putters right now. Uncle Ruckus, that's his name. He was punishing him. I think he was up by like 50 CS and two kills in one game, and like 75 CS and like a, two kills or three kills in the other game. Um, and when you have a when you have a diamond ADC doing that, it's tough to recover. And he was on Corky too, so he he reached that mid game power spike, and they never let go. Um, there was also great top play because um, Clint's a great top laner, and people underestimate Kai Eight Seed, and he did really really well this, this in these in this series, I believe. Uh, in game one, I think he was on Rumble versus Jace, and he stayed incredibly equal in farm, um, which I didn't think was going to happen. And then. Um, in game two, he didn't stay equal in farm, but he didn't feed, uh, which was very nice. And uh, big shout out to Alex. She played a really, really good aggressive support series, and it really helped Mikey get ahead. Um, did you watch those games at all, Maynard? Or did uh, you... Yeah, I okay. actually did. All right. Uh, well, go One ahead. One of the few series I managed to catch. All right. So how did you feel about the butt putters versus the cold ass honkies then? I, I think I think butt putters are like a really solid team. I, I can't really pinpoint like a person on butt putters that's really not good That's and uh, I think that their rotations have always been like I, our, my team personally whenever I play the butt putters which was a couple times has always been completely overwhelmed by them out rotating us Okay. but I, I think that um, I think that in a lot of ways Call of Duty just had a stronger game in almost every level All right. uh, and that sounds kind of harsh but like they had a they had like a better laning phase, and especially in the bot lane, they just, like Mikey just kind of wrecked them. I, I agree, one hundred percent. All right, Mikey, I know how you feel about this, but do, do you want to tell me how you felt about that series? And uh, do you have a lot of fun playing it at least? Yeah, I mean, I didn't die either game, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. I think on, the only person who like pick us to win that was BD. Like literally, everyone else picked butt putters to win it, and and that, and everybody else like even even the people that said we might have a chance, they were like, it's definitely gonna be a three game series. It's not gonna be a two zero one way or the other. And then I don't know, we pretty convincingly won that series. Yeah, I was surprised at how um, how convinc how convincingly you won it. Uh, I was not expecting a 2-0, but the way you 2-0'd them was actually the biggest thing. Like, they didn't have a chance in either of those games. You were pretty far up in both games, and once it hit, like, 10 or 11 minutes, it was almost a no-brainer you were going to win them. So, uh, congrats on that series. You guys, um, you're in the RP, so that's always good, uh, and we're hoping you'll get to the finals. But let's, like, go, we're going to go over to the other series that determines who you're facing in the semifinals. And that was the closest series of the week. It was TRF. Um, versus Sexile 2.0. Everybody knows how Chad thought about his team. Best team. 
Nobody can beat them. Nobody should take a game off them, he said, in the playoffs. Uh, obviously, he was wrong because he's out of the playoffs. So I watched this series, um, but I want to get some other people's takes on it first. So, Smegs, did you watch Sex Out vs. Um, TRF? I watched parts of it. Okay. Um, I have to say, um, I forget who they, what the bands were. I think, did they put bands on ZZ this time? Um, I don't exactly remember that. But uh, I think the ZZ was targeted. Yeah. I think that's a big one, because, like, uh, especially your, your mid lyric should not have a shallow um, champ pool. Like, like, you see, like, people are going to ban out, like, Curse Day, man. They're going to ban a Syndra. What else is he going to play? Like, you have to be really careful about that, especially coming into a playoff game. You have to have, like, a steady champ pool for that. Um, same with Chad, too. Chad, like, we knew, like, uh, ahead of time, we were gonna, he was only going to play, like, Wukong, Kha'Zix. Uh, I forget what else he would play in the jungle, but like we had that mindset when we played, when we took a game off them as a Coldest Honeys versus a Sex Out of the League early on in the season, like we banned out ZZ and we won the game, and uh, even if even giving away Kazix to Chad like still didn't really do a lot in the yeah. team fights. Uh, I think that's a that's a big that's saying a lot about TR um, about Versh. Uh, he played a really good jungle game and uh. Other than game two, where they kind of got thrown off by that jungle Katarina, which uh, I'm sure Mikey's going to talk about, um, he he ran that jungle and he controlled it. He might not have the prettiest stat line, but his presence and his his alts were on point and it let his team carry. Um, Maynard, I know you're a Verse fan. I know you're a TRF fan, right? So, did you watch that well, series at all? I'm actually, I, I did watch the series, and I'm actually really surprised by the results. I think the TRF is full of scrubs. And I, I think that they're oh terrible players, and I don't really know how they managed to win. Um, to be honest, Demrite Shaman has won against this team three times in a row. It's really easy. It's really, really easy. You ban <laughs> Lux, you ban what you ban what Burst plays in the jungle, and then you play as GP, and then you win. It's really not that hard. That might be the <laughs> only time in history somebody said you win as GP. <laughs> like that, like, and that's like a no-brainer. Uh, um, yeah, like you said, you you said you beat them three times in scrims, or and so and such. Three but, times in a row. And three times in a row. <laughs> I mean, oh, we but, are undefeated against TRF. They did get into the playoffs though, and they showed yeah. Sexile. That means you could have beat Sexile too. Oh yeah, I could beat Sexile, no but, problem. Yeah, but like, no. You hear but that, Chad? Verse is a fantastic jungler, and I don't think that there is anyone else in the entire league who is better at like objective control than him. Okay, that's. I, 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 I'd be happy to back up that statement. I would agree I, with that statement. He has managed to draft a team that is incredibly synergistic. He's made great friends with all of his team. Like just me being friends with Verse has rubbed off to make me friends with most of his team. Oh, like I that's how much he's like really invested himself into getting to know these people and like he's created a really synergistic environment <laughs> where all of his team is on the same page that's They're all gold yeah and they all practice every day like I, i'm not surprised at all that they're doing well that's a huge thing uh, uh team synergy is probably one of the biggest things when you're drafting as a captain you need to develop that over time so you do well in the playoffs um michael albaugh how do you f how do you feel about the trs for sex out uh, well, I did call Sexile winning that, but I also said if any team beats Sexile, TRF has the best chance, and looks like they had a pretty good chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just think their strategy, their overall strategy, uh, countered uh, Sexiles pretty well, and uh, the results show that. And uh, when we faced... TRF in the last week before playoffs and we beat them I I was so happy that I was like oh we're not going to have to play these guys ever again thank god but now <laughs> here we are <laughs> and it's going to be a very good game um, obviously I know more people in the blue conference because me and Team 6 and Cloud9 are both new people so I think we'll get a little bit more viewers for the blue conference finals but uh, I think they're both going to be great series um and we're going to start talking about that right now, actually. 
uh, the Cordaz Honkies versus the, uh, we're, well actually we're going to talk about the playoffs in general. So I'm going to bring up and uh, I'm going to show you guys the brackets. I mean obviously it's pretty obvious what the brackets are now. Um, but so we have the Cordaz Honkies versus Team Rally, for Rally Fortified Gold for the Blue Conference representative. And then we have Clad 9 versus Meme Team 6 for the Gold Conference representative in the championship. Um, the losers of those games will play for third and fourth uh, place prize pools accordingly. Um, so uh, I put together some facts that I've noticed by uh, looking, because both these teams, interestingly enough, are both these series are from divisional foes. Uh, they're both in the same division, so that was pretty interesting. Um, in the Blue Conference, uh, we have TRF versus Honkies. Uh, and both teams were from di uh, Division B, which some people have stated was the hardest division because somebody, Cough Cough Smigs, put three veteran captains in that division and they all had to fight it out. So, uh, obviously that helped you prepare, Mikey. Would you agree with that? That helped you prepare for the, um, the uh, season because you had to play such, uh, such good competition on a weekly basis? Yeah, I mean, we kind of, we didn't think we were a top-tier team, probably because we were playing against top-tier teams <laughs> for most of the season and losing, but I guess we're more, we're vindicated now because of, because of these finals, but at the same time, it's kind of frustrating that we have to play these guys once again when we have, like, hour-long games against each other. <laughs> um, yeah, actually... To, to just go off that, it's it's written right there that your average game length was 52 minutes, including that hour and five minute long just slugfest. Uh, I know you don't like playing in those games, but those games are actually really fun to watch. Um, that game, even though it went really long, it wasn't one of those boring long games. Uh, there was constant action happening, and it was a lot of fun to watch. So um, I kind of look forward to that happening again. Uh, something else I noticed about both you guys' games in the regular season. Both uh, both sides mid laners play the same exact one. Zerath for Fartosh and Velkos for Cyanoid. Um, Smigs, did you watch any of the Call vs. CRF games during the season at all? Uh, I did not, unfortunately, but I do know uh, Fartosh is a freaking god at Zerath, and that should be a takeaway for for a TRF or even a ban against Cold Ass Hockeys. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I know that, okay, Fartosh is a diamond player, so obviously he's going to be really good on somebody. But Cyanoid, too, on Velkaz is pretty huge as well. Um, he's gotten it basically the whole split because nobody's going to pick it away from him. They have to ban out Versh and such. Uh, and he plays really, really well on the Tentacle Master. He's a Tentacle Master. Um, <laughs> Maynard, have, have you watched any TRF versus Honky games? Uh, I, I've watched a couple. You've I've, watched a couple? I've watched quite a lot of TRF games. Okay. Um, like, Sinoid, Sinoid is really good, and, like, I know I was saying just ban Lux and just ban Verse, but at this point, I, I would actually say don't ban Verse at all. Yeah. A lot, a lot of teams take a whole bunch of bans into Verse, and he's actually the Verse who I just can't pull. He's the worst in fights college. ever. <laughs> <laughs> he's moved past three champions, so, like, you can't do that anymore. Okay, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I agree with that a lot, actually. Uh, I would focus my bans on the other members of this team. They have a very good Caitlyn player, a very good Lux player, a very good, obviously, Belkaz player. And you also have Stuffed Man at the top lane, who's good on multiple things. Um, Mikey knows how good Stuffed Man is, because he's absolutely killed him in yeah. both games, the split. Mikey, do I you mean, have any? We, we personally banned out Gnar, because he's, he's quite nice on that. Uh, well, yeah, that, that champion's broke, though. I very yeah. much hate that <laughs> champion. I mean, TRF uh, is this team where you look at it and you're like, oh, there's like 10 people that you gotta ban, but you only yeah. have three bans, so... <laughs> uh, I, like, I agree with that statement. Um, I think the most important thing in this entire series, though, is going to be the bot lane. You guys got absolutely stomped in the first game by TRF's bot lane. They had a 30 KDA that game. But in the second game, which was the, the, the way longer one, the hour one, uh, you guys had a way better KDA than they did. I think their Lux died like 11 times or something like that. Um, so obviously you guys, your guys' bot lane needs to do well for your team to do well in this game. Uh, do you agree with that statement? Do you do you feel any pressure in having to carry Mikey in this game? No, no, I, I don't really ever feel pressure to carry. It's just, like, I, I don't know. I think uh, 
strength of our team comes from not me and John, but the other three, the supporting cast. Because if they show up big, then I don't even need to show up big, and that's I think that's more important. <laughs> I, I I agree with that statement. Um. All right, so you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys are looking at at the graphic, but it has the champions to watch. Um, and it, it's basically th this team. These two teams actually are weird, as in there's a lot of like really good one champ players on their team. Um, Clawbrenocker has Lux. Uh, the, uh, the Cyanoid has Velkaz. Stuffman has Nar. Uh, I think Fartosh actually just excels on pokey mids in general, because uh, his Akali games have been very iffy this this split. Um, but we also, I put Vi versus Vi on there because I think that's his deadliest champion. Uh, would you agree with that, Maynard? Do you think Vi, his Vi is probably his deadliest champion, or do you think it's still maybe his Warwick or Nocturne? I'd be inclined to say Nocturne, honestly. Nocturne. Hey, I just haven't seen him played in a while. I don't know if that's because it's banned all the time against him, or if he's just, yeah, or if I he think chose he to pick got up. Used to ones. playing other champions. Okay, that's what um, it is. All right. I'd actually watch out for in in comps that are relevant for his uh um. He needs to be Ninja Turtle champion because I haven't played League in more than a month, so I don't remember his name. Ramus? Check out Ramus. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's actually quite good at Ramus now. Uh, Meme Team Six absolutely destroyed us with a Ramus, and Ramus is yeah. very, very good right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if he breaks out the Ramus. Um, Smigs, how do you feel about um, this list of champions? Do you feel like there's any one champion that a certain team needs to get? To prevent or to better their chances at winning, or prevent the other team from winning. Um, definitely Fartosh is Zerith. I will say that. Uh, one champion I do want to note that is not on the list is uh Mikey's Ash. Like I know I'm like a total fan of Ash, but like, like Ash is a very powerful champion. Like Ash can initiate fights, and with with a team like Coldest Honkies, like they can really capitalize on a ton of like these catchouts. Like you see, like in their game versus um, bot putters, like, you'll see, like, they engage with a Nash arrow, boom, like, that, get, that guy's dead, like, easy. Yeah, I I know that you love his Ash. Uh, I like Mikey's Corky. I think, I mean... He loves my Ash. Yeah, he <laughs> loves his Ash. ash. Uh, I think Mikey's Corky is actually what he's better at, but um, Corky's just a really good AD carry right now, and Mikey's just a good AD carry, so maybe... Maybe if he breaks out that Ash, that that weird pick that sometimes people don't know how to play against it, uh, I think maybe you'll you'll have a better chance. Um, so I just want to we're not going to include Mikey in this predictions, um, but who do you guys predict? Because obviously he's going to save his own team. Um, we're going to start with Maynard. Who do you predict to win the series between the Kodas Honkies and and, and the um, and TRF? If, if I'm going to be biased, then I'm going to say TRF, but if I'm not going to be biased, then I'm going to say it's probably somewhere closer to a coin flip. Okay. Just based on who starts getting on tilt first. All right. <laughs> um, uh, Smakes, who do you have in that? Uh, I'm going to say the uh, cold-ass hockey, so this one. Do you have any reason, specific reason? Uh, I mean, it, it, it's like you said, it's going to be down to the bot lane, and I really think that, like, the Coldhouse Honkies have the stronger bot lane. Alright, um... Despite, despite what's happened, like, in the, in the, in the regular season, I really think that the Coldhouse Honkies are doing a lot better in the postseason, so... Alright, uh, those are valid points. Um, when I picked this earlier, I, uh, I went with TRF. I think the top lane in the jungle, um... They're, they're too good, and I think Cyanoid 2 is not going to lose the far, not, far Tosh as much as people think he will. Um, so I picked TRF as well. So 2-1 to one vote. I'm sorry, Mikey. Uh, the analysts are against you, but you probably almost prefer that, huh? Yeah, um, upset week. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mikey, just real well, quick, just like in about 30 seconds or so, could you tell me the reason, the biggest reason you think you'll win this week, actually? Hmm. The real reason we win this week is because that we're the better team. Okay. All right. <laughs> you, you hear you hear that TRF? He, he just has always. no respect, no respect for you guys out there. Um, you know who really wins? It's the fans because they're going to get a Mikey video no matter what happens. <laughs> that that's very true. It's I, true. I agree with this statement. 
You guys uh, should cheer for me, because if we win, that just means more videos to come. So. <laughs> you guys, Twitch chat heard you, I'm I'm guessing. Well, Mikey, you promised me you, there's going to be an analyst video for me if we, if Cold Ass Hockeys win. <laughs> Wait, I went in, no, I did not promise. <laughs> no, no, you are going to make that promise, man. I'll, I'm the one who believed in you. <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to move to the Gold Conference facts. Um, this is the relatively unknown teams. Uh, this was what we found was the hardest thing. We, you know, we don't know anybody on these teams. Um, one team is led by a very, very good top, very good top laner. Uh, you start the season in jungler. That's Zelcor, so that's me and Team Six. And then Cloud Nine. They're obviously we've talked about them a bunch already. Their mid lane and uh, their mid lane and jungler have very good chemistry, and that kind of carries them through games. Um, as in the Blue Conference, both these teams are from the same division. Uh, they both went one and one against each other. Uh, their games were a little bit shorter, thank God, because I don't feel like watching hour-long marathons, Mikey. Um, and Nami and Quirky were contested picks in both games. Uh, they swapped them back and forth and such. Uh, it would be interesting to see if Zelcor maybe changes his role, but I doubt it. I bet he'll stay in the top lane. But they actually did lose their game when he was in the top lane, but crushed the game. They were in the jungle. So that's going to be very interesting to see. Um, I know, Maynard, you said you don't really know too much about Claude 9 or Mean Team 6, right? Yeah, that's that's probably, like, one of the biggest holes that I have in my knowledge of OS teams. All right, that's that's totally fine. Um, we have a big segment up that you can talk a lot about, okay? So I'll just go to other you know, people right now. I'll shut up for a while. Okay. Uh, Brent, how do you feel about this? Uh, I don't know if you you probably haven't watched too much either, but you do know some of the personalities on these teams. So how do you right. feel about me and Team 6 versus Claude 9? Um, I've seen Claude 9. Uh, we've played Claude 9, I believe, earlier in the season. Uh, yeah, we did play them. Uh, Boss is apparently a really good Fiora as well. Uh, so it'd be really nice to see like a uh, uh, Zelcor versus Boss in the top lane, especially when Zelcor is like the kind of the carry of Meme Team Six. And like if we get if we see Boss on a carry top lane, it'll be nice to see that clash. And that, I think that's the lane that's really gonna determine who's gonna win. Um, I know Curse Dayman is also gonna have a solid performance. I know. Um, I, I can't really say anything about uh, the bot lane though. And Durandin's probably still going to make plays. Um, I'm not entirely sure if he's the shot caller for that team, though. Okay. Um, Mikey, obviously, if you win the game, you'll be facing one of these teams. So, how no, do you. We're facing one of these teams either way. Uh, that. Holy shit. Yeah, you are right. So, how do you feel about your gold conference opponents? One of them you're going to face. So, um, in either regard, which one would you rather face? How about that? I think we'd rather face Cloud9 because okay. I think that they have a similar strategy to us, and I'd rather face, you know, a similar strategy and just play better rather okay. than go against, like, Meme Team 6, whose strategy is kind of like a weird top lane Harry thing that is kind of, like, hard to deal with. So, okay. I don't know. I think I'd rather face what I know than something that I don't know how to deal with. All right. Um, I forgot to do this. When we were when we were um, when we were on it, but champions to watch. Um, obviously, Zelcor kicked our ass on Nar, so you need to not let that guy happen. If you do, uh, good luck to you in your series. Um, <laughs> Curse Damian on Syndra, we've talked about that. I think Smegs already mentioned it. That guy's a freak on her, so you need to get rid of that. Durand Durandin on um, on Vi was very good in his series. Uh, Hop off Microsoft is Oriana player. Uh, that seems to be his best mid, but he showed against us that he could rip out any mid and do well on them. So look out for him. I think he can do very well on any mid. Uh, I was reluctant to put TSM, TSM Dr. Phil Janna because Janna is just a broken support right now. Um, and you don't really have to be particularly good support to be good at her. Uh, but you know what? He did really, really well on her. His disengage is perfect, and he plays her to the full capacity that she needs to be played at. Um, and lastly, I had Dr. Mundo from Boz. Um, he played him in both the regular season matches against Meme Team. Uh, and you know, that was in a game he faced, obviously he faced Zelcor in the one game, and he did fine. So I think that'd be huge if he can get that. If he feels real comfortable on it, and you know, just having that tank in the late game. I don't agree with Mundo being that good, but some people do, and obviously it's working for C9. So do you guys have any Anything else to add to that, or you think that's a pretty good list of champions that these teams should aim to get, or uh, try to pick away from each other? 
Um, I think all those champions, uh, the players are good on, but I think those players on the list all have other champions that are scary, like Zilkor, uh, Akali, Dayman, Oriana, uh, Durandin, J Jarvan, and so on. Yeah. So, obviously these are big champions, but they also, it's not like they're one champion players. TSM Dr. Phil also plays a really good Nami. So, yeah, they all have backups, but these are their, I think these were their best. Um, it's not like as much in the blue conference when they had, um, they had, uh, like champs they mained a lot. Uh, these guys can play many different champs, and that's always very good. Uh, it means you can't get banned out. It means teams don't have a severe advantage coming out of the ban phase, and it comes down to talent. So, very interested to see. Um, let's get your picks, though. Uh, Maynard's going to sit this one out. Uh, he because he doesn't really know too much about those teams. So the three the three votes are coming from Mikey, me, and Smegs. Um, Mikey, who did you pick to win this one? Um, I don't know. I think it's 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 pretty close. So I'm gonna pick Cloud Nine, which means that Meme Team is gonna win because I picked Cloud Nine. But <laughs> <laughs> it's my pick. <laughs> All right, Smegs. Uh, who did you uh, pick to win this one? I'm gonna give it to Meme Team Six, and uh, I'm gonna further say it's it's probably gonna be a two-one. So this is gonna go to win game three. Um, uh, both teams are really strong, and like the both, it's gonna be a mid or top lane. It's gonna determine who's gonna win the game. I think. Uh, yeah, uh, I picked Cloud Nine. Um, Meme Team Six is a very good team. Obviously, they just beat our ass, but I think Cloud Nine is a better overall team, um, and if they can. Like if they can play the mid lane a lot better than we played it, uh, I think they can get out. They can get out of there with a win. Uh, I think it's going to be close though. I do think it's going to be a two-one, but I do favor Claude Nine. So the analysts here, obviously, we've been wrong in the past, but the analysts here have picked Claude Nine to win this game. Um, so that would be your uh, your playoff bracket if our votes come true. And then Beam Team Six and T Beam Team Six and Kodak Sankeys would play in the in the third place game. Um, and that ends our playoff coverage for the show. Uh, but we're going to move into some cool stuff because in the show, I started this show and we didn't really have that much left of the regular season. So we haven't been able to talk about teams who didn't make the playoffs very much um, or players in general who are just like new and like nobody knows about. So we're going to take some time to do that. Um, Maynard, Maynard, uh, Maynard's going to talk a lot about this because this is, this is one of those segments he's really good at. So, um, we're gonna just uh, we're gonna go with non-playoff OLS teams. Um, do you want to talk about the best of the rest or the train wrecks first, Maynard? Which one? Uh, I gotta start talking with the train wrecks. You want to start at the train wrecks? Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want you to take it away, man, because I know you got a lot of t lot to say about it. So you just go ahead. How do you feel about the train wrecks that uh, that you came up with? All right. Well, I started with the uh, cell block D, shitty high, super high shitty walk, and world star hip hop. Obviously. Subwalk D is a little bit on a higher level than Super High Shady Walk and World Star Hip Hop, but all of them were plagued by similar pr problems. I, I found some very similar, like, serious problems that these these teams ran into really early on in their in their run. Um, mainly, for one thing, like I was saying earlier, morale is like one of the most important parts of a of like any team. If you lose morale early on, then you like your team is almost doomed from the get go. Uh, I agree with that, hundred percent. I think that uh, I think that World Star Hip Hop is like actually a huge, a huge like example of that because in the very beginning they were just hit with like a kick in the groin. <laughs> um, Wait, World Star Hip Hop drafted Wait. two people that said they could play all the roles, and they could only play one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, they they demanded mid or top, or else they would feed. And so they started out with no one happy with their roles, and their jungler went on to play so horribly he couldn't finish a barrel floor after thirty minutes as a Warwick. Okay, that's really that's pretty bad actually. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. And within their like third game, morale was so bad, so bad that players had lost interest in playing games. Like, they stopped showing up not because they couldn't make it, because they thought it was useless. All right, that. 
I mean, <laughs> you guys, you kind of have to feel bad for the players on the team that they want to, they want to play in the game. Um, yeah. And hopefully, Bloomberg had had good praise for three three out of his five players. Like, you thought there was solid play there. Hopefully, those players who, like the ones that didn't quit, hopefully. Uh, they realize that that's not an every split occurrence, and they come back to play with us next split. That's my only hope. I don't like when teams, there are people who are on bad teams that give up, uh, and that just turns them off the OLS. Most of the teams don't do that, so uh, this is a very yeah. rare ca- occurrence. But yeah, continue. Uh, Super High Shitty Walk, right? Would be your next one? Yeah. So there you got scheduling issues. You got a, you got like no practicing at all. Uh, huge role issues, and I think it's already brought up in the pit that people don't advertise themselves very well, because they want to get drafted. Yeah, I and agree with that. that pretty much shot down World Star Hip Hop immediately. Um, Super High Shadowhawk had a, a similar issue. I mean, Damon's team was third to last in the Little King score ratings. Not much was expected from, from the team, and Damon didn't really prove us wrong. <laughs> like uh straight from his mouth, like first pay, first what he, he says to new captains, like pay attention in the draft. Because he was spacing out and doing other work. And okay. he found a tempting offer and he bet a hundred and five points on someone. Like we all rag on Anna for spending like ninety points on on a, her boyfriend, but like this guy po- spent a hundred and five points on a diamond player. <laughs> yeah. Well, who wait? Who was his diamond player? Um, I don't even really know. Okay, I didn't know he had diamond player. I didn't even know he had a diamond player. Okay. Yeah, and he had four silver players, <laughs> and he just the team like pretty much fell apart from then, from then on. Um, there was a huge communication breakdown. Uh, scheduling games was like a really bad idea, like a re- really hard to do, and. I think I think that uh, it, most of it came from like the captain actually being too stressed. I I think this is a very common issue where captains bite off more than they can chew. Okay. Um, Damon Damon like had a whole bunch of work to do this semester, and he thought he could do forty hours of work a week and and also take eighteen credits and then be a captain and. That was just not feasible, so he paid the consequences of that. I don't think it's feasible for anyone, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that does not um, sound like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think that he's very surprised after all that that things didn't work out well for his team. Okay. Um. And uh, I I think I think that no practice no practicing like. If you don't practice, then your team won't have any certainty going into any games. And I, I've heard from both of these captains that like they didn't practice at all. Okay. And I mean, uh, I another issue is one trick ponies. A lot of these char- a lot of these players can only play one role in like one one champion. And they either got banned out or they force other people into uncomfortable positions. And that just made everyone miserable. Like, and, and and I know I'm the last person who should talk about one trick pony syndrome. Like, because <laughs> all I can do is be a pirate. But like, <laughs> I I understand that's not easy for some people to get over, especially like silver players. Like my team, I personally ran into issues with Sophie because. He's like a really good mid mid player, but I had is at Matt Life on my team, and he's also a really great mid, mid player. And putting him anywhere else would be like an opportunity cost problem, right? Yeah. But but like once we traded B-Ball Boss for for is at Matt Life, we could put um, Sofrathy in the mid lane, and he was a monster. He beat like a, a platinum player, and he's in bronze. Like that was. <laughs> If you put if you put players that you think aren't very good into a place where they're comfortable with, that can give you a lot of bonus later on. Yeah, I agree with that statement. Um, and Subblock D, he uh, coach could not play on the weekends at all. He he just had like a really it was another problem where he just didn't 
he as a captain couldn't follow up for his team. Okay. Um, and multiple times he had to like he was forced to forfeit because his team couldn't show up on time, and there, or like he didn't he wasn't able to to manage his team to get them all there at the same time that he was because of how funky his his schedule was. Okay. And Vivo Boss was actually like really alienated from his team from the start because his schedule immediately conflicted with coaches. And once that trade actually happened, they started winning games. They won like three games in a row after that. Okay. It was it was actually a pretty decent comeback after that one. Um, and he actually quit his job at the restaurant, and that also contributed a lot to that to that comeback. Um, alright, well that's the train wrecks, um, and a common thing what I heard there was like the captains, um, is there anything you think people should know, uh, that's huge to them before they go to be a captain, like sign up to be a captain, because we're going to have OLS sign up soon, uh, and obviously there's going to be a little box for if you would like to be a captain or not, so is there like a major thing you think people don't know about being a captain they should know about ahead of time, uh, so that these, we don't run into these problems again? Well, for one thing, it's a lot of work, um. You do have to, like, making decisions, it contributes to your overall, like, tax load of your, your exhaustion for that day. And as a captain, it doesn't sound like that much to just, like, get everyone together and play a game, like, twice a week. But there are a lot of decisions involved, and you take a, a, player, a player base of, like, five people who are all college students, who are all have different schedules, and you need to get them together to practice all the time, and you need to get them together to play games. And ultimately, that leads to a lot of decisions that, like, only you can really make. Okay. Uh, furthermore, there's, there's just a ton of drama and bullshit involved in, like, scheduling games with other captains. Okay. All right. I agree um, with that. I'd also like to add, uh, check your Facebook at least two or three times a day. Come on. It's not hard. Yeah. You really do need to do that. Yeah. Um. All right. I know. I know you like you want to talk about the best of the rest a lot, but we are we're gonna we're running out of time soon. So I kind of want to get to the last part and then obviously the Twitch questions. Um, is there anything you could say to sum up the best of the rest, uh, the best possible? Yeah. Um, um maybe I already kind of talked about it. I mean, mostly what I want to say is how those how the best of the rest was basically they were great teams. They just took a while to. The while to get on their feet, because they faced a lot of the same problems that the train wrecks had. Um, they were played with one issue or another, and yeah. with my team, it was mostly just role issues. But like, as soon as we got over that, we started winning games all the time. And I think that's the same with all these teams. Like, they had this one hindrance early on, but as soon as like with umadbad.com, they had the lowest rating at all. But like. But like they could, they could get back on their feet because Evan taught them really well. Yeah. To be honest, he was like a mentor for that team, and he was able to like carry them pretty hard just with his expertise. All right, I agree with that. Um, like you said, 420 kittens was uh, they there was a team that started out slow, and you know they caught wind at the end of the season. Um, cold house honeys were kind of the opposite; they were really hot to start, cold down. Oh, yeah. I can stay right here. We we yeah. start out really hot. Oh yeah, smegs. Then... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, we just we just had a ton of role issues like mid season, and like we really just couldn't get our mojo back. So I, that's probably the big reason why we didn't make playoffs to split. We we were like what what one of the only teams that beat sex out of league the whole season, like the whole group stage season. So I really think that like if we like we also got pretty lazy practicing too. We used to practice maybe like four or five days a week, and like towards the end of the season we like practice maybe like once or twice a week. So. But once midterms and finals start looming, it's not easy to keep up that kind of schedule. Yeah, it's really not great. <laughs> I mean, when you put the best AD carry on support too, that kind of will screw you. Just throwing that out there. Um, yeah. I, but like you said, though, that's a rule problem, and that's something you got to look forward to when you're drafting. Uh, unfortunately, it screwed these teams. They weren't able to get into the playoffs. Um, but you know what? They got extremely close. They were able to overcome hurdles, and... You learn from that experience, and hopefully we'll see some of these players uh, in the playoffs next split. Um, we're going to go to the last part before Twitch questions. 
and that is the best new faces to the LLS. Uh, we all we all put this, we all the people here put this list together um, today, and they're people that we agree uh, have just done an amazing job this split, and nobody knew about them. Um, they're new people to the split. They're new people to pit. Uh, freshmen, if you may. Um, so these are the group of people that we thought have excelled extremely well this split, uh, and and we didn't know about them beforehand. Because um, you know this, a lot of people in this group are tight knit friends that they've known for two or three splits. Uh, these people are brand new, um, and they came in, uh, and they've done a really good job. Uh, they are listed by number. These are the people that like in this in this order. Uh, except for the honorable mentions, they're not listed. They were just thrown in there. Um, so we'll start out with Mikey because he, he uh, has the number one new face, Fartosh, on his team. Mikey, what do you think Fartosh has brand, brought to the LLS uh, in general? Uh, he just uh, he just he's just a solid performer. Um, I don't think he's a great laner necessarily, but he's just so good in team fights and like. I think the best thing about him is his attitude. He's just like, I don't know. <laughs> he's just always got a positive attitude, even if you're losing a game. And he's just like, you know, let's just go out there and uh, have some fun. <laughs> That's a good mentality to have, though. That helps everybody out. Um, yeah. If you yeah. if you can like not tilt, if you can stay confident the whole time, if you just if you're just there for fun, I mean at the end of the day it's competition, but you need to have ways to get away from the competition. And remember, it's just a video game. And he, I think he brings that to your team. He brings a level level headedness. I, I've played a couple games with him, obviously, like when I play with you, or I've been in a call when you're playing with him. Um, and he does bring that to your team, and that's that's obviously shown to be pretty huge for you. Um, so number you're two, saying he is an anti Cassidy. <laughs> Hey, well, Cassie's my captain. He's a great player. You don't talk about him like that. Um, Smigs, we're going to talk about... I'll let you talk about the number two person on this list in Zelcor. All right, um, let's talk about Zelcor then. Yeah. Uh, um, obviously, uh, wait, before you go, obviously he was going to do good this split. He's a D2 player. Yeah. You know, like, he's not going to do bad. But, uh, yeah, tell me how you what you think Zelcor has brought to the OLS. I think Zelcor briefly, I believe he played jungle for a little bit in the Mini Team 6, and then he, like, went to the top lane again and like we've seen like he's been dominating on these carry top laners and like I think that's one of the biggest reasons why Mean Team 6 is doing so well in the playoffs too so like I that's why I have to give him like even though he's a D2 player he's making plays for the team and he's like just carrying them on his back on Mean Team 6 alright um I'm gonna go to Maynard with the number 3 person on this list Jay Leisinger um you you advocated a lot for the PMC bot lane in general on this list. Uh, so I just want to hear, what do you think was so good about Jay Leisinger? Other than bringing a very good captain to our, to the OLS, what has he done as a player also that you think has made him um, made him good enough to be put on this list? Well, I, I, think, I think that not only did he bring his entire community with him, like he brought an entire team with him. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay. He also... Like really excels in bot lane, and I think him and T Slag. I ca I can't really men mention Lysander without also mention Okay. Without also talking about T Slag because like those two have such good synergy, it's it's almost insane. Uh, from what I I heard from Lysander when I interviewed him, uh, they went up to platinum together. Okay. From from bronze, like. Oh wow! Okay. They've That's been in it all the way, and. I'm not surprised that they have a dynamite bot lane now. Okay. I also have to say, Jay Lysinger is probably one of the only people in the OLS right now that can make Blitzcrank work in the bot lane. Uh, like, I would you agree. You see his play on Blitzcrank. Really good. Yeah. Um, Alright, well you kind of handled T-Slag with that. Uh, the only thing I would add to T-Slag, very good Vayne player, which you don't see a lot of in the OLS. But he is a very good Vayne player. Yeah, you can't let him get out of hand on that, or else he will dumpster you. <laughs> um, and then the number five person on our list we interviewed him earlier he's the cloud nine captain obviously he's brought um, being a good captain he's led his team to the final or semi-finals you know um, but he's also just been a very good jungler uh, a problem with pit the, well I've played in two pit OLS's in the summer OLS there wasn't actually very many good junglers uh, there was Ponarbs and then there was Versh, basically like the only two good junglers. And then you know everybody else was kind of mediocre, or not not mediocre because that sounds insulting, but like not to that level. Um, he brings a very good jungler 
to the OLS. And this whole split has seen a lot of good junglers. We saw Chad go into the jungle and do very well. Um, so I think bringing that to the OLS was pretty huge. Uh, and it was good to see because I, I don't like when one position is dominated by a couple players. And I think a lot more diversity was brought to the OLS to split. Um, teams teams can now pick up like a good player in almost every position. There's not like two good tops anymore. Uh, and I really like that that's happened. And um, I'm super happy that all these people have joined us. Um, there was a couple of other newcomers that uh, didn't make, quite make the list, but they were very close to the list. We kind of we fought over who we should put on the list, uh, and then we finally came to a conclusion. Uh, we have Sabin C from the Cold Ass Honeys. Um, Brent, that was your captain. Yep. Once again, another another new person stepped up to be a captain. Uh, I mean, he might have had a couple problems there. You guys didn't quite make the playoffs, but he still was really good. He led you to an 86 record. He made some plays on some weird picks. Uh, oh, yeah, so definitely. Uh, but like like I said, like we lost Jake in the top lane in the OLS this split. Um, yeah. But like with the addition of Soundcast, um, there really is, again, like you said, like a more diversity in the OLS. We got another strong top player now in the OLS. Um, and then we already talked about Curse Damon, the mid laner for Cloud9. Him and Durenadin have been amazing together. Uh, and they've they've shown that that's why they're both on this list. Uh, lo kind of like why both the PMC people are on this list. Um, and then, man, I just want a lot of people probably don't know about C9 Asian Blades. Actually, uh, can you just give us a little bit about him? I know you said he had some freakishly good plays this split, uh, two Penta kills or something, right? Right. Yeah. And, and also a Quadra kill. That's <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, what position did he play, though? I don't even—I don't even know what position he played, to be honest. Well, he played—he played a mix of mid and AD carry. Okay. He had him top a few games when I decided to play support, but honestly, he can do it all. This kid's amazing, honestly. <laughs> all right, so he should be a contested uh, pick in the next—the next LLS split, then, huh? Yeah, he—he's—he's uh, he's got a crazy attitude on him. Like that guy will BM the crap out of anybody, and he—he he, he will shit talk everyone. Who he's playing against, and he will like sing Taylor Swift game. through the entire <laughs> game. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> shit talking's not bad though. Uh, well, like that's not bad at all. He won't do it to their face. So there's that. <laughs> hey, uh, some people will do it to your face. Cough, cough, curse, Damon. Um, but that's another and story. I got, I got to hand it to uh, Sankov because he's actually shown up to like. Every pit event I've ever thrown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah. so, has. Like I've just uh, that like scene. as a freshman, that's really cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, hey, but you get to, you get to meet a bunch of people that way, and obviously he's having fun. And uh, we're growing we're growing the group to more than just a video game, and uh, I really like how we're going with that. Um, so that's that's all we have planned for you guys. Uh, but obviously we're gonna take your Twitch questions now, um, as long as they're appropriate, as always. Uh. So feel free to ask them in Twitch, and then we'll answer them um, right now for you guys. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see anything. I don't see anything right there. But um, Mikey, I, you haven't really talked too much. Uh, do you think I, I forgot to ask you this? Do you think um, you're gonna two o TRF, or do you think it's gonna be two one? Honestly, not in your BM. You're not in your BM answer. <sighs> Honestly, I don't know, but what I can say is I think whoever wins the first game will win it. Okay. All right. That. All right. That's that's all okay. I needed. Yeah. Um, Clobber Knocker asked, "Do you guys think we still would have beat uh, Sex Out of the League if they had picked a real jungler?" Wow. Shots fired. First off. <laughs> um. Second of all. I'll take this question first, and we'll pass it around. I uh, will go Smegs, Maynard, Mikey. Uh, no. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know what the hell he was doing with the Jungle Katarina. All split, he's applied pressure early, and you can't do that with Jungle Katarina. That's all I'm going to say about that. Smegs, oh, what do you think would happen? Uh, yeah, that Jungle Katarina. Like, I mean, you're going to do a lot of damage in there, there, but, like, you really need some crowd control lockdown on, on some of these... Uh... On you know, team comp, like you really can't do full damage. Especially if you're going up against first, you need someone who can control the jungle and control objectives. And like Katarina, especially pre pre six, like can't do that. I agree 100. percent Mikey, I know I know you did you didn't like that pick very much, right? Yeah, I th I don't know. I think it's the same thing as Ohana a little bit. It's kind of like a successful team just picks something totally different than they've been 
doing all split. That would be like uh, Sinoid and TRF playing against us, and he just doesn't pick Valkaz. He goes like Katarina mid <laughs> or okay. something. It just like doesn't make sense to me. Like, why would you do that? Um, a lot of non-serious questions in the Twitch chat. Thanks, guys. But uh, I'll take a part of Pharaoh's question. Who has the best synergy? Uh, it could be bot lane synergy. It could be mid jungle synergy. Who do you think has the best uh, synergy in the OLS? Um, um, that's kind of it's it's super hard to answer when like there's like tons of people that have really good synergy, you know. And I don't have all the teams memorized. I haven't watched every game, so I'll start. Uh, you'll start, Brent. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I will have to say the Durand and Curse Dayman mid jungle synergy probably the best in the OS. Okay. Uh, I mean the playoff performance is probably good enough to say what um why I have p picked them as the best uh, synergy. Okay. Duo. Uh, Maynard or Mikey, you have anybody you think has really good synergy? Uh, me and Alex spot lane. Come on, we uh, didn't both. Okay. <laughs> I guess I guess that's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, you have anybody, to, uh, Maynard? Uh, speaking just in terms of bot lane, I'll, I'll give it just uh, to T-Slag and, uh, Lysinger. Oh, yeah. But well, I, tell you I, on that I one. think, I, I need to think more for, yeah. for just the whole map synergy. That's a, that's a tough thing with these Twitch questions. Some of them, like, Roz is doing a little research, and, uh, we, we can't really do that in, like, the quick time we have. Um... Why do I think Pharaoh sucks at support? Uh, because you play mage supports and not even like real mage supports. You play like Ziggs and you deserve to lose and I'm happy you did. Uh, no. Next question. I think we should take Austin's question because I, I can really answer that right now. Like this is a good opportunity to answer this. Which Austin question? I can't. Uh, you, you going can... up, talking about uh, the prize pool only for four teams when there's 24 teams in the Okay. Alright, I right, go ahead. All right, I'll take this one. Uh, reason war one, uh, we don't really have an income in the low pit. Like we, a lot, a lot of this uh, group events here are done for free. Like we do this from riot funding, and like we really don't get anything out of this. So that's we do it for free. We do it for free, guys. And like, see, this is the reason why we want to consider having like a buy-in. So like we could provide more prizing to guys. Like. We know, like, right prizing, right points are great and all, but, like, I know you guys want cash. I know you guys want, like, more more to swag you give it out. We want trophies in this. Like, we might actually consider having a trophy, so. Um, yeah. It's like, we're, I'm probably going to put up a all this, like, pre registration thing at some point just to get a head count of how many people want to be in, want to play in all this next split. And uh, we'll go from there. So, um, look out for something later tonight. I'll be posting that. Um, Alright, last question. Okay, I saw Chad. Chad, Chad, I understand that you think the jungle cat works, man. But you're like the only one who thinks the jungle cat works. I'm sorry, it didn't. Like, you caught them off guard in the second game. That's why you won. But the third game, you couldn't do it again. That's all I'm saying. Um, I'm going to take one last question because it's from Farrah and it's actually a pretty good question. And... Um, which put, okay, I'm not going to answer TBSWKs because that's too long and I can't <laughs> think of it. But are there any more events like All Stars or 1v1 tourneys? I'm going to give Me this and right. My team. I'm I'm going to give this right to Brent because I think Brent would it be the only one of us that has an answer, and that's going to end our show. So Brent, uh, is there going to be anything else like 1v1 tourneys or All Stars going on this year? Um, uh, not this semester. I'm going to say, uh, guaranteed. Uh, next semester, I'm trying to get my hands into uh, CSSD so we can get an actual LAN going. So we're probably gonna have a we might have a big LAN this year um, on campus. So look out for that. I'll post information as I get it. Um, All Stars, I will try to plan out All Stars more ahead of time this year. Uh, seeing that we did All Stars in the summer, but we didn't have All Stars this fall, that kind of sucked. So I, I hope that we can try to fit that in next split, so um, there you go. Maynard, you, you also throw you but you're it's not like a wall pit affiliate thing, but wall pit people are strongly encouraged to go. So how often do you plan on throwing something like you threw on Saturday, that nice little land party you had? Um I was thinking about uh bi weekly, um or like every other week, but I, I think of every month is probably more applicable. Okay. It it might be possible that we do like extra events other than that though. Uh, Alright, because that was a ton of fun. A ton of people showed up, actually. A lot more than I was expecting. 
a lot of people had like a, over 40 there. Yeah, a lot of people had a really good time, and um, I, w I think people would love to have that happen again. Um, I just want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, I know we went, I know we went 10 minutes over, so I'm sorry to those people who don't really like watching long shows. Um, uh, I really appreciate Smigs and Maynard, and of course Mikey. Mikey comes every week though, so he's kind of he's kind of my co my co partner in the show. We kind of bounce everything off of him anyway. Staple in East. Yeah, so Mike, it's it's kind of Drew and Mikey's thing, but uh, I kind of just do most of the work, and he just puts his name on it. Um, so, so, so uh, that's that's what the support does for the AD carry, right, Mike? Yes, I am. You're the support, or I'm the support. I can't can't figure it out. Um, but but thanks for thanks for joining us again. Uh, I'll have this posted on YouTube uh, a little bit later tonight. It just has to export and everything. I appreciate you guys for joining us, and uh, we should be back next week. I'm pretty sure, depending on if I go home or something weird for Thanksgiving. But I'll let it, I'll let the I'll let you know on the Facebook group. Um, I don't have any guests so far for next week, so if you're interested in being a guest, let me know on Facebook, uh, and I'll see if I can get you in there. And um, Maynard and Smigs actually told me what they wanted to talk about tonight. And if you ever think if you ever want us to talk about something. Uh, you don't want, really want to be on the show? Just tell me ahead of time, and I can put it into the show. And I really like it, enjoy doing that. Um, but thanks, thanks again for joining us, everyone. Uh, we hope you have a really good night. All right, see you guys.